So wait a minute. Is Carlton doing Xanax or cocaine? It's cocaine, right? Alright, welcome to Taste Take. If you're new here, we're doing Season 1 Bel Air recaps and reviews. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular Taste Takers, let's see if Episode 7 was fire or if you should demand a refund. Get it? I said refund and it's called Payback's a Bitch because a refund is like when you get your pay back. Uh, never mind. You know the drill. Supersonic JJ Fab recap of Episode 6. Episode 6 is where we have the banks putting on that fundraiser in honor of Lisa's mom, Gail, who died from lupus. And because Hillary's helping out with the cooking, she's not posting new content. And we need new content. Carlton and Lisa are supposed to recite a poem together. I still don't know why. But of course that doesn't happen because Cocaine Carlton goes Cocaine Carlton. We find out that Lisa's dad was sliding with his current wife while his ex-wife was still alive. Reed, the R guy, still out here creeping around. Fred tells Uncle Phil he's going to run against them for a DA. Will and Lisa ignore Carlton's wishes and start making out. And Hillary's in the kitchen cooking in lingerie. That's pretty much episode six. I so boom, episode seven. This one's called Payback's a Bitch. The episode starts with Uncle Phil telling Will that they need to talk. He really just wants to find out how close he's getting to Lisa and if she knows the real reason of why he came to Bel Air. At the same time, Fred, who's Lisa's dad, is telling Lisa, I don't want you hanging around that Will kid or any of those Bankses until the election's over. Quick commercial break, but did y'all realize that Lisa's dad in The Fresh Prince was also named Fred, which makes sense. Everyone got the same name, but damn, like the other Fred was way cooler. And then remember he was sliding with Will's mom. That thing was juicy. And then he proposed to that thing. Man, those are the days. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Anyway, back to Bel Air, freaking new Fred. And honestly, if Uncle Phil really wanted a leg up in this election, why not just make one of those cheesy political commercials where they're like, Fred Wilkes was sliding on his wife, Gail, with his new wife, Angela, while his previous wife had lupus. Is that the kind of man you want as district attorney? No, you don't. Because when there's a fill, there's a way. And you can take that to the banks, banks, banks. This message was paid for and approved by Phillip Banks and Taste Tate. You know those political commercials? But yeah, something like that. I mean, I guess he can't prove it, but when has that ever stopped a politician before? Hey -o. So yeah, Will and Lisa are both told to stay away from each other. And the next scene is them making out at school. Young love. Lisa tells Will that they have to tell Carlton, and Will's like, yeah, you're right. But in his head, he's probably like, damn. I still don't get that relationship, and I don't care what y'all say. Like, this dude Will has been in Bel Air for like a week. You're the new kid. You're from Philly. You're the basketball star. You don't want to just like take your time and see some things. Like, have that moment for those of us who never got to be the new cool kid at school. Well, I've been the new kid, but I wasn't cool. Anyway, the next scene we're with Hillary and she's talking to Monica about how she's not sure if she should have filmed that OnlyFans video and she's like, damn, I don't think I should post this. And Monica's like, uh, Kylo already posted that, bruh. Hillary's all pissed, but Monica reminds her like, anything you film in the influencer house is free game. Like he owns all of it. Plus, you should be more body positive. Like own that shit. Video's fire. Hillary's still pissed that he posted it, but like, you recorded it. What? What did you think was going to happen? Why, what was the point of it if you didn't think it was ever going to get posted? The next scene, we're with Aunt Viv, Uncle Phil, and Steven, his campaign manager. And they're telling Aunt Viv, like, hey, we lost some key endorsements, so I'm going to need to start putting up some of my own money. He wants to know if she'll be cool with it. And Aunt Viv's like, Phil, you know I support you, but we've been spending mad money, so we're going to have to scale it back a little bit. And then Big Mouth Steven is like, so should I just return the money? Now you see now, you know, fucked up, you know, that don't you? So of course Vivian is like, what the hell? You out here gaslighting me talking about should you spend this money? And you already spent it? Uncle Phil be blowing it. Then we're off to Bel Air Academy to see Carlton at lacrosse practice. Typical scene where a character in a TV show or a movie has something bothering them at home and for some reason, suddenly, they completely forget how to play the game they've been playing for years. So Carlton's over here doing bad at lacrosse. And to be frank, I don't know what doing bad at lacrosse looks like. I don't know what doing good at lacrosse looks like. 
But his teammate Connor, and yes, that's the same Connor that was rapping the N-words. That was the same Connor who Will punched in the face at that pool party. And that's the same Connor who planted those drugs in Will's backpack. So yeah, that Connor. Freaking Connor says, well, at least now there's one sport they can't take from us. Word. Carlton, Mike, how is this your boy? But I guess he's not his boy anymore because the next play, Carlton hits the kid so hard that he breaks his wrist. Then he walks off the field in the middle of practice like Antonio Brown. Carlton feels like everyone at school hates him and he has no friends anymore. Which is probably true. He probably didn't have any friends. Will says he got an idea to get him back on track with the school. He wants to throw a house party. So you're telling me that your big idea to get your cokehead cousin to feel better is to throw a party? This dude Will is an enabler. The next scene we're with Aunt Viv who's watching Hillary's OnlyFans video with Hillary. His family is open. Kylo is not taking Hillary's call and she doesn't know what to do. She's going crazy. Which is funny because last week you weren't taking his calls and he's the freaking boss. So it's a little taste of your own medicine. Anyway, Hillary wants Uncle Phil to come save the day. Probably sue Kylo, get the video taken down. But Aunt Viv is like, hey, don't you want to like fight your own battle sometimes? And Hillary's like, damn, you're right. It is Women's History Month. I mean, she didn't say that last part, but it is. Uncle Phil finally pulls up and he's like, what's going on? And Hillary's like, no, no, it's cool. And she goes along her way rejoicing. Then Aunt Viv tells Uncle Phil, I'm going to San Diego for the weekend. It's an art show. The boys are throwing a party tonight. Goodbye. Uncle Phil's in the doghouse, straight up. Then he's talking to Jeffrey. And Jeffrey's like, you know Reed's going to be at this art show, right? Jeffrey? And Uncle Phil's like, damn, she didn't even tell me. Just like you ain't tell her you already spent the campaign money? So Vivian gets to San Diego, and of course Reed is there being all Reedy. And he walks up and he's like, let me get you a drink. Reed wastes no time, ladies and gentlemen. Back at the house, the Will and Carlton party is starting. And Will gets on the microphone and he's like, what's up, y'all? This is my cousin Carlton. They're at his house, and they're from his school. Like, what's happening here? Next scene is back over in San Diego. Vivian and Reed are talking. You know he's talking all low, whispering. And he's like, people are loving your art. You know you're going to have to go on some lecture tours. And out of nowhere, freaking Uncle Phil comes busting through like the Kool-Aid man. So remind me again who's watching over the party in Bel Air? Oh, okay. And speaking of house party in Bel Air, now Jazz pulls up, and he's flirting with Hillary. And he's seen her OnlyFans video. And you would think that Jazz would be like, damn girl, let me get a private show. But he was really like, damn girl, they're exploiting you. Shout out to Jazz being a feminist. Okay. Then there's a scene in San Diego where Phil and Viv are talking. Now it's Reed's turn to pull up from the shadows. And Uncle Phil's like, I know you love freaky games and how you prey on female artists. But Reed ain't phased though. He's been training for centuries for moments like this. Bel Air house party, Lisa pulls up and still no one has told Carlton about Will and Lisa. And Will may be trying to distract Carlton by hooking him up with this girl named Aisha. So Carlton and Aisha are getting their flirt on and everything's going just fine until she calls him a sellout. Ugh. You know he's about to go on a rampage, right? Like, hide your kids. Hide your cocaine. Back to San Diego with Phil and Viv. And to be honest, these two are kind of boring me now. Like, Uncle Phil, what were you thinking? Pulling up on your wife, trying to catch her in the act. Where's the trust at, bro? Anyway, she's told Uncle Phil that she has nothing to hide and she likes hanging around Reed because he appreciates her art. And everyone she knows, they always ask her, Damn, Viv, when are you going to start painting again? When are you going to get back to that art? When are you going to go back to your passion? And Uncle Phil never did. Anyway, back to the party. The new chaperones, Hillary and Jazz, walking on these two kids making out. They kick them out and they sit down. And they get all close. And they get to smooching. And this is a win for all the short guys out there. This is a real nice step in the right direction for representation. We love to see it. Hillary gets a call mid-smooch, which is terrible news for Jazz, but good news for Hillary, because she finds out that Kylo's at some event, and she could pull up on him and ask him to delete the video. She decides to go find this dude, and Jazz agrees to come along. So just remind me again who's going to be watching the party? Oh, Ashley? Okay. Back to freaking San Diego. Phil and Viv are still being all boring, and Uncle Phil is like... What could I have done differently? And then Viv's like, bro, it's too late. I need a rescuing 15 years ago, which is crazy. Then she tells him, you should just go back home. Yes, you should. We go over to Hillary, who made it to the event that Kylo's at. And I don't know what her plan is here. Like, the video's already up. You signed a contract. 
Your mom already seen it. What are you going to tell this dude? Like, please take it down. And as soon as she tells him to take it down, these two black people walk by and co-sign it. They're like, yeah, girl, we seen the video. It was fire. This is a body positivity for me. You know how we talk. So Hillary's like, damn, was that video fire? And Kyle was like, see, people love it. And I might have even secured you a deal with Victoria's Secret. And you know what's crazy? That I didn't even realize that this whole little Hillary OnlyFans saga is a callback to the Fresh Prince when she did Playboy. Sheesh. Y'all don't remember that episode. Y'all don't remember that. These boys are good. Back to the house party. Lisa's explaining to Will how things might be hard for Carlton being the only black kid. Even though Aisha just asked him why he didn't go to the BSU meetings. Like, what's happening here? The next scene is back in San Diego, but I just can't talk about it. Not contractually, not because it's a spoiler, it's just too boring. So back to the party, Carlton gets a text from John telling him to go to the game room. And was I the only one that thought this was a sneaky link? Oh, just me? Okay. So Carlton pulls up to the game room and he realizes that Connor's at the party. You got a lot of nerves showing your face around here, pal. This dude John is also on the lacrosse team and he just wants him to squash the beef. But Carlton calls Connor out for being racist and homophobic. Connor goes full on prep school and tells Carlton that he's whack and this is a whack ass party. <laughs> like, just get out of here. Aisha from the BSU sees Carlton holding it down and she's impressed. Better luck next time, John. Nah, I'm just kidding. Last couple scenes here, we're up in Will's room and Lisa's in there and she's asking him, what's the real reason he came to Bel Air? And he's like, my mom wanted a better education for me. Okay, that's a good lie. Let's see how long it lasts. They start making out, and Will's like, uh, we can go back to the party. And she's like, well, we can stay here. <laughs> Y'all know he's gonna catch you guys, right? She goes to the bed, it's about to go down. And Will asks her, you sure you're cool with this? <sighs> we love the consent. And let's take a break from that for a second. It's getting a little steamy over there. We're gonna go over to Hillary and Jazz. Hillary just found out that she could possibly get $15,000 per post from Victoria's Secret. So she's looking like And then Jazz is looking like Ugh, if I have to, back to San Diego, Uncle Phil is now gone. Vivian is talking to Reed again, and Reed's like, I don't want to be the source of your stress. He's lying, he does. And he's like, if you need to step back, I understand. And she's like, nah, I don't need to step back. What? Last scene of the episode, we're back in Will's love cave. They assumably have smashed. He tells her she's his girl. Now we got Carlton looking all over for Will so he can tell him that he finally stood up to Connor. I mean, yeah, I give Carlton a hard time, but it is real nice that he looks up to Will so much that he's so proud to like share this moment with him. It just turns out that he's hooking up with your ex-girl. It's just a bad time. Like, So you see Carlton asking all these people at the party like, yo, you seen Will? Ugh. And just cause the people at Peacock don't wanna pay this extra, just a little bit more money to let him talk. He goes up to this kid and he's like, yo, you seen Will? And cause the kid can't talk back, he's literally lip syncing. Peacock, you better pay that kid next time. Just pay that kid. That was an important part of the review, but it happened. Anyway, before Carlton can go upstairs and walk in on Lisa and Will butt naked, the cops come busting through because Connor, old freaking snitchy McRat over here, called him up. <sighs> of course, we're about to have our Black Lives Matter moment here. I just hate these scenes just because if they try to squeeze it in, like these scenes be happening in real life for sure. But like, okay, number one, you pulled up on a mansion. Like, you... This is a mansion, and this is Bel Air, so like you already know, like these people are rich. Then you come trying to arrest Carlton, like whose house is this? He tells you it's his house. They got this dude all roped up, his arms behind his head, like okay, yes, we know that cops are abusive of their power a lot, but like why not just have Carlton like so angry at like Will and Lisa and the situation that he like pushes the cop a little bit, like duh, this is my house, you crazy? Like give me something realistic where like Carlton's like. Yes, this is my house. He's like, get on the ground. Like, it's Bel Air. Anyway, mini rant over. Lisa comes down and saves the day. She done called up her dad, Fred, and she's like, 
my dad wants to talk to you. So now this cop got to talk to Fred on the phone. He's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, but he's black. All right. All right. Click. And they just leave. And they didn't even say sorry. They never say sorry. It, it will go a long way. Anyway, now Carlton knows that Lisa and Will were canoodling. And that's pretty much episode seven. So what's my take? I'm going to give Bel Air season one, episode seven, 3.5 stars. The last two episodes before this were just way better in my opinion. And this episode wasn't whack. It just felt like more of a setup episode. Like episode seven probably walked so that episode eight could run. We're probably going to see some Anviv and Reed spicy moments. We're probably going to see another Carlton meltdown. We're probably going to see how Lisa's dad rages after he told her not to go over there. And not only did she go over there, she went to a house party that was unsupervised. And then now he can make a commercial that goes, Philip Banks is throwing house parties at his kid's house and there no, there's no adults there. And they're doing cocaine and Xanax. Oh, mom. Do you want that kind of person for district attorney? This message was paid for and approved by federal... You ever seen those commercials? And then maybe we're going to get some Hillary, Victoria's Secret content. Everybody wins. Y'all don't want the content? Uncle Phil is probably the reason why this episode couldn't be great. So you better get it together. I just, those scenes were dragging. I, maybe y'all disagree, but my lord. Anyway, the question of the week. Does Carlton have a right to be mad that Will and Lisa are now dating? Now, they were broken up. Will didn't come in here and break it up. What do you think? As always, thanks for checking out Taste Take. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments. You can answer the question of the week or you can say whatever you want. Mm, mostly anything you want. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.